Good morning and welcome to RTHK's Hong Kong Today. I'm Janice Wong. And I'm Mike Weeks. Coming up, the government expands its vaccination drive to cover millions more people because of the low take-up so far. Experts say none of the seven deaths among people who've received Sinovac injections can be linked directly to the vaccine. Hong Kong's film industry gets a major boost in this year's Oscar nominations and in sport, Liverpool climbed to sixth in the English Premier League with a 1-0 win at Wolves. The government is expanding its coronavirus inoculation program to cover more than 5 million people aged 30 and above. That's because of the relatively low vaccination rate in the past two and a half weeks since the program was launched. Domestic helpers and people over 16 studying outside of Hong Kong are among those who will also be given priority, as Wendy Wong reports. The government wants to boost the number of people getting vaccinated amid a slow take-up rate in the city. Besides the elderly and medical workers, for example, priority will be given to domestic helpers and students aged over 16 who study outside of Hong Kong. They can make a booking online from 9 a.m. today. The official heading the government's vaccination drive, Civil Service Chief Patrick Nip, pointed out that fewer than 200,000 people have taken the jab so far since it began late last month. He said while some were adopting a wait-and-see approach, amid reports of deaths and side effects, others were keen to be inoculated. We noticed that there are still a capacity to handle more. There are people who uh, do not belong to the priority groups but who wish to be uh, vaccinated early. The uh, present uh, expansion of the priority groups to include uh, those uh, aged 30 and above basically is to make more people um, who wish to be vaccinated can get the vaccines and also to streamline the administration, uh, administrative arrangements. Mr Nip said Hong Kong currently has 1 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines produced by mainland company Sinovac and 1.34 million doses from German drug maker BioNTech. Secretary for Food and Health Sophia Chan reiterated that the vaccines are safe and that no link has been established between the jabs and the reported deaths. She again stressed the need for the people of Hong Kong to get vaccinated. The more people get vaccinated, the faster they get vaccinated, the better that they are protected, not only as an individual, but also uh, in a community as well as improving or helping with the uh, control of our epidemic situation. Twelve more vaccination centres will be open, taking the total to 27. People can also book and take the jabs at more than 2,000 private clinics. Wendy Wong. Infectious diseases expert Dr Wilson Lam says the expansion of the government's programme may not result in an immediate jump in the number of people seeking a vaccination. He told RTHK many people are still concerned about the safety of the jabs following the deaths of seven people who'd recently been inoculated as well as others who'd suffered serious side effects. I would not expect a big jump in coming days because the general confidence of about vaccinations is being hampered by the recent incidents. But hopefully the younger citizens would just join to be vaccinated because that's very important to achieve the herd immunity as soon as possible. Dr Lam said the government should step up its efforts to allay fears about the coronavirus vaccines. A panel of experts has concluded that none of the seven deaths among people who had received the Sinovac injections can be linked directly to the vaccine. Violet Wong reports. Three of those who died were aged over 70, three in their 60s, while one was 55. A co-convener of the expert panel, Professor Ivan Hong, said preliminary investigations found a number of the patients had blocked heart blood vessels which led to their deaths. He noted that heart-related problems are common in Hong Kong and kill an average of 16.7 people per day. The expert said people with cardiovascular diseases should still be encouraged to take the vaccines if their condition is stable. We only refer to patients who have symptoms, for example, chest pain or shortness of breath on exertion. So these patients, we would suggest them to defer the vaccination until they have controlled their current illnesses. Professor Hong also said there was not enough evidence so far to link the Sinovac vaccines to two cases where patients had suffered Bell's palsy, a type of facial paralysis, after receiving the jabs. 
but he noted that the timing of the onset of symptoms makes it more unlikely that the injections were to blame, noting that overseas experience shows vaccine-related cases of Bell's palsy usually develop four to eight weeks after inoculation. So these cases actually presented the Bell's palsy within a day. So the time frame is a little bit unusual. As a result, we could not confirm uh, whether it is due to the, the vaccine itself or whether it is due to a concomitant viral infection. Professor Ivan Hung there ending that report. Three more countries have suspended the use of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. France, Italy and Germany called a halt in response to Norwegian concerns about blood clots. At least 10 European nations have followed advice to wait for more information. Germany's health minister, Jens Spahn, said his government's decision was a professional, not a political one. The decision today... Today's decision is a purely precautionary measure. Millions of AstraZeneca vaccinations have been administered across the globe. All of us are very aware of the consequences of this decision, and we did not take it lightly. Both the World Health Organization and the European Medicines Agency are due to review the data today. The WHO has said countries should continue using the AstraZeneca jab for now. Here in Hong Kong, the government imposed overnight lockdowns on seven more residential buildings in the Saying Pun area as authorities try to halt the spread of the outbreak that started in the Ursus Fitness Center. It was the third straight night that buildings in the area have been sealed off for testing, which has so far found two infections, a couple who worked at the U.S. consulate. Sixteen new local cases were confirmed yesterday. Vicky Wong reports. The 40-year-old man and 41-year-old woman live in Dynasty Court. Health officials say they showed no symptoms and last went to work on Friday. Dr Albert Au of the Centre for Health Protection says the pair had not travelled out of Hong Kong recently. They did recently visit a bar on Staunton Street and a restaurant in Sai Kong. Dr. Al says officials are working with the U.S. consulate when it comes to contact tracing. As far as we understand, they are working in the U.S. consulate as office staff. But for the exact job nature of these two persons, we are still liaising with the U.S. consul general to understand more about their job nature. We will also arrange the household contact of these two cases admitted to the hospitals for testing and also for quarantine. In a statement, the consulate said the employees in question do not not work in offices where there is interaction with the public, adding that the consulate building has been closed for deep disinfection and cleaning. Meanwhile, Hong Kong has seen another 30 confirmed coronavirus infections, 16 of which were locally transmitted. 13 infections are linked to a coronavirus outbreak at a gym in Saingpun, taking the total number of cases in this cluster to 122. There are 14 new imported cases, including 10 foreign domestic helpers who recently arrived in Hong Kong. Vicky Wong. The government says it's exploring ways to allow hundreds of Hong Kongers stuck for months in the UK to return home. However, there's no sign yet of a ban on arrivals from Britain and three other countries being fully lifted. Steve Dunthorne has the details. Hong Kong banned arrivals from Britain on December the 22nd as it sought ways to prevent a new, more infectious strain of COVID-19 from reaching the SAR. The ban applies to anyone who has spent at least two hours in the UK in the 21 days prior to boarding. Brazil, Ireland and South Africa are covered by the same rules. Reports say more than 400 Hong Kong residents in Britain and elsewhere have sought help from the Immigration Department, with some saying they had only prepared for a short trip. A spokesman said the government recognised the impact of the rules on Hong Kong residents as well as the fact that the number of coronavirus cases in Britain has fallen dramatically, while a third of the population there is now vaccinated. It says it's looking at ways to allow Hong Kong people to return to the SAR directly from Britain and will announce the details later. However, there's no sign yet of quarantine rules being eased. People arriving from anywhere outside China will still have to spend 21 days at a designated hotel. Hong Kong's film industry has been given a major boost with the local industry's choice for the Best Foreign Language Oscar making the five-strong list of nominees. A film about the 2019 protests is also up for Best Documentary Shot. Cecil Wong has the details. 
Directed by Derek Jung, the film Better Days is the first movie put forward by Hong Kong to be nominated for the Best Foreign Language Film Oscar since 1993, when Farewell My Concubine was on the list. The Mandarin language film was made and set in the city of Chongqing, and was a major box office hit on the mainland last year, though it was less widely seen in the SAR. The film will be up against nominees from Romania, Bosnia, Tunisia, and a co-production from Denmark, the Netherlands, and Sweden for an award that has never been won by Hong Kong. The ceremony on April the 25th will also spotlight a documentary about the 29 anti-extradition movement, Do Not Split, made by Norwegian filmmaker Anders Hammer, which is up for Best Short Documentary. In the Best Director category, mainland-born Chloe Zhao will compete for her film Nomadland, which is also up for Best Picture. For the first time, there are two women on the shortlist for the Director Trophy, with Britain's Emerald Fennel, who's nominated for another Best Picture hopeful, Promising Young Woman. The Netflix film Mank leads the nominations with 10. So that's the one with that report. Bring the time now to nearly 15 minutes to 7. The High Court has granted bail to three more pro-democracy figures accused of subversion while remanding one defendant in custody. Francis Sitt reports. It's the latest in a series of bail hearings involving the 47 pro-democracy figures accused of conspiracy to commit subversion over primary polls held last year. Madam Justice Esther Tov decided to release district councillors Kelvin Ho, Shi Tuck Loy and Li Yushun, ruling against her government appeal against a lower court's decision to grant them bail. Mr Ho was freed on a cash bail of $30,000 and a $100,000 surety, while the other two were released on cash bail of $100,000 each, along with the same amount in surety. But the trio were ordered to surrender all travel documents, report to the police regularly, observe a curfew, and not make any speeches or do anything that could be viewed as violating the national security law. Justice To, however, decided to remand District Councillor Sam Chung in custody. He appeared calm upon hearing the bail decision and waved to supporters and his pregnant wife in the courtroom. Chief Magistrate Victor So had originally granted bail to 15 of the 47 defendants on March the 4th, but they were all remanded in custody after the Department of Justice declared that it would be appealing. The High Court has since released several of the defendants on bail, including former Democratic Party lawmaker Helena Wong and District Councillor Clarice Young. Francis Sitt. Senior mainland officials have started consulting people on Beijing's planned overhaul of Hong Kong's electoral system, saying they're keen to listen to local opinions, so long as they're in line with the central authority's decision on the matter. Some pro-government figures are now debating among themselves the details of Beijing's broader plan, including how many lawmakers the new election committee can choose. Maggie Ho reports. Mainland officials are to hold around 60 seminars with around 1,000 people here, including government officials, executive councillors and pro-establishment industry representatives. Zhang Xiaoming, deputy director of the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office, told one seminar they want to hear what people think, but only if they accept the basis of what he called the 3-1-1 decision, the broad overhaul approved by the National People's Congress on March the 11th. Some media reports say that Zhang Xiaoming is here to explain the decision, but this is not the main purpose. The main purpose is to bring our ears here, to listen to people's views, and if necessary, we will make clarifications. But there is a prerequisite and a basis for our discussions. The very important basis is the National People's Congress decision that has been approved. We're not here to talk about wild scenarios beyond the decision, or there wouldn't be any focus. Liaison Office Director Luo Huining invited people to speak freely, saying the central authorities are genuine in listening to views. Both officials told the Hong Kong participants to keep their comments brief. Beijing has already announced that the number of seats in Leshko will be expanded from 70 to 90, with the election committee to help vet Leshko poll candidates and choose some lawmakers itself. Further details are to be revealed later by the NPC Standing Committee. But pro-government figures are divided on how many lawmakers should be chosen by this committee. A Hong Kong delegate to the NPC, Stanley Ng, says it should choose 50 legislators, saying this would be good for the city's overall interests and would prevent the SAR from sliding towards extremism.
Executive Councillor Ronnie Tong, meanwhile, said he had proposed that the 90 seats be equally divided between candidates picked by the election committee, functional constituency voters and the general public. He said this could avoid giving people the impression that any of the three groups is more important than the others. Maggie Ho, the chief executive, says implementing the electoral changes mandated by Beijing is so important that she will supervise every aspect of the work herself. Carrie Lam told Wen Wen Pao, Tai Kung Pao and the Hong Kong Commercial Daily that her administration must complete its task in the coming 12 months. Jimmy Choi has the details. Mrs. Lam was speaking to the pro-Beijing newspapers about last week's decision by the National People's Congress to make sweeping changes to Hong Kong's electoral system. These include expanding the Chief Executive Election Committee from 1,200 members to 1,500 and empowering it to nominate and select lawmakers. The Legislative Council is also to be expanded from 70 to 90 members. The Standing Committee of the NPC is yet to make a decision on how to amend Annexes 1 and 2 of the Basic Law on the Chief Executive and Legislative Council elections. But when that's done, the Hong Kong government will have to rewrite local laws. Mrs Lam told newspapers that more than 20 pieces of legislation will have to be amended. She said the government may change the laws by introducing a composite bill into LegCo. She said the council's president, Andrew Leung, had already promised to speed up the scrutiny of the draft legislation. But she said as this is such an important task, they have agreed that there has to be enough time for lawmakers to fet it. She said they would like legislators to hold more and longer meetings while leaving aside other work if necessary. The chief executive failed to supervise every aspect of the work, from drafting of the relevant laws to explaining the changes to the public, saying she won't delegate the task to others. She said the government will have to hold the election committee and LegCo elections a few months before calling the chief executive election. That's scheduled for March next year and will require the new members of the election committee to select the next DE. Mrs Lam said the three elections will be held in a step-by-step manner, with the government first arranging for the election of the 1,500 election committee members, who will then carry out the new duties vested in them by the MPC to select some LegCo members and nominate all candidates for the LegCo elections. She said while the schedule would be very tight, the government must be able to get everything completed in the coming 12 months. She said there's no question of trying to get it done. Beijing's proposal to overhaul the city's electoral system also includes the setting up of a fatting committee to screen candidates for the election committee, LegCo and chief executive. Mrs Lam said the committee would ensure all candidates meet the Patriot test. She said she believes it would operate at a higher level than returning officers. Jimmy Lai there. The new director of broadcasting has told legislators that a programme was abruptly pulled from RTHK last week because it wasn't completely impartial. The broadcaster replaced an episode of LegCo Review that was to have discussed Beijing's electoral reform plans in Hong Kong with a rerun. But Patrick Lee, a career civil servant who took charge of the station at the beginning of the month, refused to go into specifics. He spoke only about editorial principles and the need for staff to adhere to RTHK charter and producers guidelines he spoke through an interpreter i would not talk about the specific programs in some of the programs we invited guests to offer their views normally you would include views from different sides of the spectrum the program we dealt with last week had more to do with the um, production and that it wasn't completely impartial And I do agree that we need clearer guidelines, so that was one of the recommendations in the review report. Two months after the riot at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, when a mob loyal to former President Donald Trump stormed Congress, more than 300 people have been charged. Now the U.S. Justice Department has announced that two further suspects will face charges connected with an attack on three police officers, one of whom later died. The BBC's Gary O'Donoghue is in Washington. These relate to two men uh, who are now in custody, uh, and these are these both these men are accused of assaulting assaulting three police officers. They're facing nine charges altogether. One of those officers is Brian Sicknick, who died the day after uh, the riots in the capital. He died in hospital. Now his his cause of death hasn't yet been determined. Uh, but the, these two men are facing these charges, and the, the allegations suggest that they use some kind of powerful spray.
spray on three officers. Um, there's been talk about bear spray having been used, and there's some evidence in the indictment that, that uh, they were carrying something like that, and that uh, the officers are seen after being sprayed, covering their faces, retreating from the line that's trying to protect the capital, uh, and having to, to go and sort of wash it out of their eyes. It was later after that that Brian Sicknick was taken to hospital, uh, and as I say, he died the day after. The BBC's Gary O'Donoghue reporting there. And it's time now in Hong Kong today for a look at the business headlines this morning. Here's Carolyn Wright. Wall Street's two main indices closed at record highs overnight as optimism grows over the US economic recovery. The Dow Jones rose half a percent to end at 32,953 points, while the S&P 500 gained two-thirds of a percent to 3,969. The Nasdaq climbed 1% to 13,460, but remains about 5% below its all-time high. Airlines and other travel-related stocks were among the big winners, as Delta, Southwest and JetBlue reported an increase in leisure bookings. And in currencies at the moment, the yuan is trading at 6.50 to the US dollar, who got 10 Hong Kong dollars, 79 cents to the pound, 109.1 yen to the US dollar, and 1 US dollar, 19 cents to the euro. Oil is down two thirds of a percent at $68.79 a barrel, while gold is down very fractionally at $1,731 an ounce. I will help fight the virus. I will protect Hong Kong. The government has launched the Leave Home Safe mobile app for everyone to keep visit records. Remember to use the app to scan QR codes of designated venues. Visit records will only be kept in your phone. If you went somewhere visited by a confirmed patient around the same time, the app will automatically alert you and give health advice. Use the app together. Feel at ease when going out. Let's fight the virus. Scan with Leave Home Safe. Good morning, I'm Adam Jern with Sports. Liverpool got a much-needed win in their bid for a place in the English Premier League's top four and guaranteed Champions League football next season. Just the one goal settled the game at Wolves. Sadio Mane plays it square to Salah, back to Mane, now to Jota, Jota with a chance, it's in! Rui Patricio couldn't keep it out and Diogo Jota has come back to Molyneux on his first visit back against his former club and he has scored the opening goal. It finished 1-0 for Liverpool who moved up to 6th in the table, still 5 points off the top 4. There was a lengthy delay when the Wolves keeper Rui Patricio was assessed by medical staff after a collision late in the game and uh, he was stretchered off the pitch. The former England keeper Rob Green said it was a serious incident. A bright game, a lively game, wasn't it? And uh, one where both teams really were on the front foot and took the game to each other. And, and it was one that I wasn't expecting coming to the ground today and, and had really enjoyed it. But it goes without saying, it, it, it doesn't matter when you see an incident like that. You just hope that Patricio is OK and you hope that you know he recovers well. In Spain, Lino Messi has equaled the all-time appearance record for Barcelona by playing in last night's 4-1 win over the bottom club Huesca. He scored twice. Messi moved level with Xavi's club record of 770, uh, 767 appearances. The win put Barca second in La Liga, four points behind the leaders Atletico Madrid. Ernest Macia of Radio Catalunya says the arrival of a new president at Barcelona means Messi is likely to add more trophies for the club. We know that when uh, there were the elections last uh, couple of uh, weekends before he voted for the first time, it, he had never voted in an election in FC Barcelona, which shows the commitment that Messi has with the club. And a new atmosphere now is uh, we are breathing in in Barcelona and especially the players seem to be more happy. We've seen uh, in the last uh, couple of hours uh, Xavi saying that he's happy for uh, Joan Laporta and for the club. That Laporta is the president and I think that the players, Messi amongst them, uh, is happy that Laporta is there. And I think that Laporta has a, has a chance to convince Messi to stay, not only because Messi will turn 34 in a few months, but because I think he's comfortable in Barcelona. I mean, the lifestyle for him is good. 
French prosecutors have launched an investigation into a robbery at the home of Angel de Maria after thieves broke in broke in uh, while the Argentina winger was playing for Paris Saint-Germain. His teammate Marquinhos has also been a victim of burglary in Paris. Uh, the French football writer Sarah Manai says it's not the first time PSG players have been targeted this way. No, it's not. Di Maria and Marquinhos join um, just a growing list of uh, PSG players who have been targeted by thieves those last few months. Uh, Thiago Silva before he left for Chelsea, but also Chupo Muting, Mauro Icardi just a month ago. So, uh, no, it's not. It's definitely not the first time. And uh, top flight clubs are shown once again that the security of players must be taken, uh, of course, more seriously. And from now on, uh, what we learned today is that PSG will reinforce uh, the security around the players' homes. And we finish in the NBA. Steph Curry dropped six threes on the league-leading Utah Jazz in a 131-119 victory for the Golden State Warriors. Curry finished with 32 points. Draymond Green helped out with his 26th triple-double. Utah lost for only the 10th time through 38 games this season. And that's your look at sports. Thanks, Atta. Now the weather before the news at 7. Mainly fine. The top temperature will be around 27 degrees. Winds moderate easterlies. Forecasters say it will be rather warm and relatively humid in the next couple of days. Right now, the temperature reading at the observatory is 21 degrees. Relative humidity, 89%. online and RTHK mobile apps. This is Radio 3. It's seven o'clock. I'm Samantha Butler. Some three million extra people will be able to book coronavirus vaccines from nine this morning after the government lowered the age limit from 60 to 30, while foreign domestic helpers and people who study overseas can also join. The minister in charge of the programme, Civil Service Secretary Patrick Nipp, said vaccination bookings weren't full and there were people who weren't in the priority groups who wanted an injection. But an infectious diseases expert says expanding the programme might not result in an immediate spike in appointments, as many people were concerned about reports of serious side effects. Dr Wilson Lamb called on the government to step up education efforts. General confidence of, about vaccinations is being hampered by the recent incidents. So, but hopefully the younger citizens would just uh, join to uh, be vaccinated because that's very important to achieve the health immunity as soon as possible. A panel of experts say heart problems are the likely cause of death for most of the seven people who've passed away after receiving inoculations, though they see no need to change vaccination guidelines for people with cardiovascular conditions. The experts say there's no sign of a direct link between the vaccination and any of the deaths. Professor Ivan Hung says people with heart problems should get vaccinated if their condition is stable. We only refer to patients who have symptoms or have very poor control. For example, their, hy their hypertension, they have very poorly controlled or they have very poorly controlled diabetes or they have ongoing symptoms, for example, chest pain or shortness of breath on exertion. So these patients, we would suggest them to defer the vaccination until they have controlled their current illnesses. And then, of course, they could receive the vaccine afterwards. He said heart problems were common in Hong Kong, causing an average of almost 17 deaths a day. Ambush-style lockdowns have been imposed in Central and Western District for the third consecutive night, with residents of seven blocks in Sai Ying Pun ordered to take COVID-19 tests. Officials hope they finish the operation by eight. Yesterday, health authorities reported 30 new cases, 16 of them local, with 13 of those connected to a gym cluster, which has grown to over 120 people. Two U.S. consulate employees tested preliminary positive during Sunday's ambush lockdown in mid-levels. The 40-year-old man and 41-year-old woman live in Dynasty Court and showed no symptoms. The World Health Organization has urged countries to keep using the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine as a growing list of European nations suspend injections. Spain, France, Italy and Germany are the latest to halt its use as a precaution after concerns were raised about a small number of people who'd suffered blood clots. Germany's health minister Jens Spahn said his government's decision was a professional, not a political one. 
Die Entscheidung heute ist eine reine Vorsichtsmaßnahme. Today's decision is a purely precautionary measure. Millions of AstraZeneca vaccinations have been administered across the globe. All of us are very aware of the consequences of this decision, and we did not take it lightly. You're listening to the news on RTHK. Good morning again. This is RTHK's Hong Kong Today with Janice Wong and me, Mike Weeks. It would be of the best interest, not only of the individual, but also of all the sectors to get vaccinated because uh, with more people getting vaccinated in Hong Kong, the faster we'll be able to get herd immunity and the faster that we will be able to get our normal daily life and also our economic situation back on track. Health Secretary Sophia Chan urges people to get inoculated against COVID-19. She made the appeal as the government announced the expansion of its vaccination programme to cover some 3 million more people aged 30 and above. Domestic helpers will also be able to make a booking online from 9 o'clock this morning. The scope of the vaccination drive has been widened because less than 200,000 people have received jabs since it was launched late last month. The expansion of the program comes as a panel of experts concluded that none of the seven deaths among people who had received the Sinovac injections could be directly linked to the vaccine. Violet Wong reports. Three of those who died were aged over 70, three in their 60s, while one was 55. A co-convener of the expert panel, Professor Ivan Hong, said preliminary investigations found a number of the patients had blocked heart blood vessels, which led to their deaths. He noted that heart-related problems are common in Hong Kong and kill an average of 16.7 people per day. The experts said people with cardiovascular diseases should still be encouraged to take the vaccines if their condition is stable. We only refer to patients who have symptoms, for example, chest pain or shortness of breath on exertion. So these patients, we would suggest them to defer the vaccination until they have controlled their current illnesses. Professor Hong also said there was not enough evidence so far to link the Sinovac vaccines to two cases where patients had suffered Bell's palsy, a type of facial paralysis, after receiving the jabs. But he noted that the timing of the onset of symptoms makes it more unlikely that the injections were to blame, noting that overseas experience shows vaccine-related cases of Bell's palsy usually develop four to eight weeks after inoculation. So these cases actually presented the Bell's palsy within a day. So the time frame is a little bit unusual. As a result, we cannot confirm uh, whether it is due to the, the vaccine itself or whether it is due to a concomitant viral infection. The government has also issued new guidelines recommending whether individuals who suffer from specific medical problems should receive either the Sinovac or BioNTech vaccines. Authorities say the mainland-produced Sinovac should not be given to patients who have had a history of allergic reactions to vaccines, suffer from a range of neurological conditions, who are pregnant or breastfeeding, or have uncontrolled and severe chronic illnesses. It also lists out a long list of conditions or medical situations where patients are encouraged to first consult their doctors before receiving the jabs, including everyone under 18 years old or have any acute diseases. There is only one item in the list of patients for whom the German-made BioNTech should not be given, that is, anyone with a history of allergic reaction to the ingredients of the vaccine. The list for those who are encouraged to consult their doctors is of a similar length to the Sinovac guide. Spain has joined the growing list of European countries to suspend use of the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine. France, Italy and Germany have also announced a temporary halt in response to concerns raised in Norway about blood clots. The European medicines regulator maintains that the benefits of the jab outweigh the risks. And the World Health Organization has, for now, advised its continued use. The WHO chief, Tedros Adnam Ghebreyesus, said there was no cause for alarm. This does not necessarily mean these events are linked to vaccination, but it's routine practice to investigate them. And it shows that the surveillance system works and that effective controls are in place. 
AstraZeneca says the few dozen reported problems among the 17 million people it has inoculated in Europe suggests the incidence of blood clots is lower than normal in a population of that size. Here in Hong Kong, the government imposed lockdowns on seven more residential buildings in the Sayim Pun area last night as authorities tried to halt the spread of the outbreak that started in the Ursus Fitness Centre. It was the third straight night that buildings in the area have been sealed off for testing, which has so far found two infections, a couple who work at the U.S. consulate. Sixteen new local cases were confirmed yesterday. Vicky Wong reports. The 40-year-old man and 41-year-old woman live in Dynasty Court. Health officials say they showed no symptoms and last went to work on Friday. Dr Albert Au of the Centre for Health Protection says the pair had not travelled out of Hong Kong recently. They did recently visit a bar on Staunton Street and a restaurant in Sai Kong. Dr Au says officials are working with the US consulate when it comes to contact tracing. As far as we understand, they are working in the US consulate as office staff, but for the exact job nature of these two persons, we are still liaising with the US consul general to understand more about their job nature. We will also arrange the household contact of these two cases admitted to the hospitals for testings and also for quarantine. In a statement, the consulate said the employees in question do not work in offices where there is interaction with the public, adding that the consulate building has been closed for deep disinfection and cleaning. Meanwhile, Hong Kong has seen another 30 confirmed coronavirus infections, 16 of which were locally transmitted. 13 infections are linked to a coronavirus outbreak at a gym in Saingpun, taking the total number of cases in this cluster to 122. There are 14 new imported cases, including 10 foreign domestic helpers who recently arrived in Hong Kong. Mainland officials have told a seminar on electoral reform that the central government wants to listen to views on the planned changes as long as people's opinions are based on Beijing's decision on the matter. Zhang Xiaoming, Deputy Director of the Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office, told the seminar at the Convention and Exhibition Centre in Wan Chai that he wants to canvass people's opinions. Some media reports say that Zhang Xiaoming is here to explain the decision, but this is not the main purpose. The main purpose is to bring our ears here, to listen to people's views, and if necessary, we will make clarifications. But there is a prerequisite and a basis for our discussions. The very important basis is the National People's Congress decision that has been approved. We're not here to talk about wild scenarios beyond the decision, or there wouldn't be any focus. The director of the liaison office, Luo Hui Ning, invited people to speak freely, saying the central government is genuine in listening to views. But both officials told the Hong Kong participants to keep their comments brief. Beijing has already announced that the Legislative Council will be expanded to 90 seats, with the election committee to vet LegCo candidates and choose some lawmakers itself. Further details are to be revealed later by the NPC Standing Committee. It's now 11 minutes past seven. The new director of broadcasting has told legislators that a program was abruptly pulled from RTHK last week because it wasn't completely impartial. But Patrick Lee refused to go into specifics about his decision to replace an episode of LegCo Review that was to have discussed Beijing's electoral changes in Hong Kong with a rerun. Liberal Party lawmaker Felix Chung was among lawmakers who'd wanted an explanation for that and other shows being pulled. We understand there's a charter that all the people of the RTHK has to follow. What is the line that they have to follow? Whatever they have done right and wrong. For example, there are a couple of programs that has been taken out and are not allowed to broadcast. What wrong was that? At least the administration should tell the people why or did they make any mistakes on the program and they have to tell them how to um, rectify that or how to improve that. 
Felix Chung. It's now 12 minutes past seven on Hong Kong today. The Oscar nominations have been announced in LA, giving a major boost to the Hong Kong film industry. One of the SAR's nominees, Better Days, is on the final list of five for Best Foreign Language Film. While Do Not Spit, a film about the anti-extradition bill protests here, is nominated in the Best Short Documentary category. These were announced as an award-winning documentary about the police siege of Polytechnic University in 2019, was pulled hours before its first commercial screening last night, following days of criticism from a pro-Beijing newspaper. Violet Wong reports. Inside the red brick wall documents the violent standoff between police and protesters at the university in November 2019. It was supposed to debut at the newly opened Golden Sin Cinema in Kennedy Town, but the Hong Kong Film Critics Society pulled the plug after the one way poll ran multiple articles condemning the screening and accusing organizers of breaching the national security law. The group said the screenings had attracted excessive attention and also said it would cancel a second showing, which had been added because of public demand for tickets. Enoch Tam, a film critic who had been invited to give a post-screening talk, took to Facebook to say that Hong Kong's commercial cinemas have increasingly avoided political films in recent years and that this has worsened under the national security law. The 88-minute documentary, produced by a group of anonymous Hong Kong filmmakers, had won the Best Editing Award from the International Documentary Film Festival Amsterdam, Europe's largest documentary film festival. The movie also won the annual grant prize from the Hong Kong Film Critics Society and was therefore included in the commercial screenings of all winning projects. A 24-year-old man has been sentenced to five and a half years in prison for biting off part of a police officer's finger and breaking the arm of another policeman during anti-government protests almost two years ago. Altus Wong reports. The district court heard that To Kai Wa bit off the tip of police sergeant Lan Kai Yip's right ring finger during clashes between protesters and policemen in Newtown Plaza in Sha Tin in July of 2019. He was also found guilty of using an umbrella to hit Superintendent Leung Chi Kin, breaking his arm and striking police constable Yip Chuk Kin. The University of Hong Kong graduate was earlier convicted of four charges, wounding with intent, causing grievous bodily harm, assaulting a police officer and behaving in a disorderly manner in a public place. In sentencing, Judge Johnny Chan says he has taken into account the need to punish the defendant and to ensure his rehabilitation to deter future offenders and to heal the wounds of the victims and their family. Altus Wong. The High Court has granted bail to three more pro-democracy figures accused of subversion while remanding one defendant in custody. Francis Sit reports. It's the latest in a series of bail hearings involving the 47 pro-democracy figures accused of conspiracy to commit subversion over primary polls held last year. Madam Justice Esther Tov decided to release District Councillors Kevin Ho, Shi Tuck Loy and Li Yushun, ruling against her government appeal against a lower court's decision to grant them bail. Mr Ho was freed on a cash bail of $30,000 and a $100,000 surety, while the other two were released on cash bail of $100,000 each, along with the same amount in surety. But the trio were ordered to surrender all travel documents, report to the police regularly, observe a curfew, and not make any speeches or do anything that could be viewed as violating the national security law. Justice To, however, decided to remand District Councillor Sam Chung in custody. He appeared calm upon hearing the bail decision and waved to supporters and his pregnant wife in the courtroom. Chief Magistrate Victor So had originally granted bail to 15 of the 47 defendants on March the 4th, but they were all remanded in custody after the Department of Justice declared that it would be appealing. The High Court has since released several of the defendants on bail, including former Democratic Party lawmaker Helena Wong and District Councillor Clarice Young. Francis, sit there. The Consumer Council says the number of complaints about wedding services has surged during the ongoing pandemic, with many couples having to postpone or cancel their bookings. The watchdog highlighted one case in which the couple were told to pay in full just to cancel their booking. Candice Wong has the details. 
According to the council, the couple had paid a 30% deposit, or $72,000, for a banquet worth $210,000. They were then told to pay the remaining sum to a Chinese restaurant group to cancel their booking. The restaurant had reportedly said the outstanding amount of $140,000 was for compensation. After the council's intervention, the complainant didn't pay anything extra other than forfeited deposit. Said. That's among more than 230 complaints recorded by the consumer watchdog last year, the highest in three years. The council's chief executive, Gilly Wong, said people getting married should be careful with what they sign up for. Don't trust verbal contract. And um, just in case you need to postpone or defer or, or make any changes you know, to the contract, which is major, we would suggest you to sign a new contract instead of amending the existing contract because based on our findings, it is quite obvious that the standard template that the restaurants or venues that they are using may not be uh, may not be well drafted to cover um, the situation that we are facing. In a separate study, the council detected problems with some hair dye products it tested. They were listed as natural but were found to contain allergens or heavy metals. It tested 26 hair dyes and organic hannas available on the market and found 16 had substances that could trigger allergies. All six HANA products it tested contained lead and one contained mercury, but they are all within the allowed levels under the standards in mainland China. Some hair dyes failed to say they contained ammonia and allergens, and the council said it has passed the relevant cases to local authorities. In response, the Customs and Excise Department says it seized two products found to have exceeded the bacterial counts allowed under Hong Kong laws. In parts of Myanmar's main city, Yangon, Chinese financed factories were set ablaze on Sunday, with many protesters saying that Beijing is directly supporting the country's army. China wields a great deal of influence as a major investor in Myanmar. Sebastian Strangio is Southeast Asia editor at the current affairs magazine, The Diplomat. For quite some time, protesters in Myanmar have been taking aim at the Chinese government for, in their view, supporting the coup d'etat and the military government. There have been a lot of rumours swirling that China had a hand in the coup or gave the green light to Myanmar's generals. None of this has been confirmed or verified, of course, but it speaks, I think, to the simmering anti-Chinese sentiment that is running through the ranks of the, of the protesters in Myanmar right now. What China wants above all is stability and predictability. Under the NLD government, the Chinese government had made quite a lot of progress in advancing strategic infrastructure projects linking China's landlocked southwest provinces with the Indian Ocean. And China had reason to think that the second term of the NLT government would have been very fruitful for bilateral relations. The coup all of a sudden has brought back to power the institution in Myanmar, which is perhaps most suspicious of China. You know, not to mention the instability, the, the fact that the country's affairs and economy have ground to a halt now because of the protests. So I think that, you know, Beijing is probably pursuing a strategy of wait and see. You know, they're sitting on the fence and, and watching what the developments in Myanmar are, and then they will try and make a decision that safeguards their best interests. But for, the, for many of the people out on the street, China's silence is complicity. It is a huge challenge for them. From the perspective of a lot of people out on the street fighting against the military government, you know, countries cannot be neutral on this issue. So it's, it's very difficult to see how China can maintain that position. You know, arguably, it's also not in China's interest to do so. I think that the Chinese embassy in Yangon has recognized in the past few years the importance of trying to win over public sentiment and that public opinion about China it matters a great deal to its ability to advance its goals in the country. If China decides to throw its weight behind the coup government, whether openly or otherwise, it's going to find itself associated with a loathed military government. And that's going to poison the reputation of China and the minds of many Myanmar people for years to come. Sebastian Strangio there from the current affairs magazine, The Diplomat. Walkers on a beach in Ireland have spotted a walrus thousands of kilometres from its home in the Arctic Circle. Marine biologists say they believe it could have fallen asleep on an iceberg before being carried across the Atlantic to the Irish coast. The BBC's Charlotte Gallagher reports. 
On a windy Sunday afternoon on Valencia Island off the Kerry coast, there was an unusual sight, an Arctic walrus lounging on rocks next to the bitterly cold Atlantic Ocean. People visit the island for its wildlife, gannets, seals and dolphins, but a walrus described as being the size of a giant dairy cow by locals is a first. The male marine mammal is still young, with tusks around 30 centimetres long. When he's fully grown, they'll be up to a metre. The BBC's Charlotte Gallagher reporting there, and that brings the time now in Hong Kong today to 22 minutes past seven. With another look at the business headlines, here's Carolyn Wright. Asian stocks look set for gains as trading begins for the day. The ASX is up a quarter of a percent in early trading. Hang Seng Index futures up just over half a percent and Nikkei futures up two fifths of a percent. Wall Street's two main indices closed at record highs overnight as optimism grows over the US economic recovery. The Dow Jones rose half a percent to end at 32,953 points, while the S&P 500 gained two thirds of a percent to 3,969. The Nasdaq climbed 1% to 13,460, but remains about 5% below its all-time high. Airlines and other travel-related stocks were among the big winners, as Delta, Southwest and JetBlue reported an increase in leisure bookings. The Wall Street Journal reports that Beijing has asked Chinese e-commerce titan Alibaba to divest its assets in the media sector, including a high-profile Hong Kong newspaper, out of concern over the company's growing public influence. Its founder, Jack Ma, who officially retired from Alibaba in 2019 but remains a large shareholder, has been in authorities' crosshairs in recent months. In November, mainland regulators halted a colossal 34 billion euro US dollar IPO by Ant Group, an Alibaba subsidiary for online payments. The following month, regulators opened an investigation into Alibaba business practices deemed anti-competitive. Citing people familiar with the matter, the journal says authorities are now asking the tech giant to drastically reduce its presence in the media sector. And in currencies at the moment, the yuan is trading at 6.50 to the US dollar, got 10 Hong Kong dollars, 79 cents to the pound, 109.1 yen to the US dollar and 1 US dollar, 19 cents to the euro. Stay tuned for the latest financial analysis with Money Talk after the news at eight. Joining Peter Lewis today are Pete Sweeney, Asia editor at Reuters Breaking Views, and William Ma, Hong Kong-based investment executive. With a view from South Korea is Peter Kim, managing director and investment strategist at KB Securities. No matter how fit we are, it is important to get vaccinated to prevent COVID-19. All along, we have received different vaccines to prevent infections. Vaccines will help create antibodies and memory in our immune system. When we come into contact with viruses in future, our immune system will quickly resist them. It is the simplest and most effective method to protect ourselves and others. Let's get vaccinated. Adam Jones with sports. Lionel Messi has equaled the all-time appearance record for Barcelona. He scored twice in a 4-1 win over bottom club Huesca. Messi ties Xavi's club record of 767 appearances. The win put Barca second in La Liga, four points behind the leaders Atletico Madrid. Ernest Masia of Radio Catalunya says the arrival of a new president at Barcelona means Messi is likely to add more trophies for the club. We know that when uh, there were the elections last uh, couple of uh, weekends before he voted for the first time, it, he had never voted in an election in FC Barcelona, which shows the commitment that Messi has with the club. And a new atmosphere now is uh, we are breathing in in Barcelona and especially the players seem to be more happy. We've seen uh, in the last uh, couple of hours uh, Xavi saying that he's happy for uh, Joan Laporta and for the club that Laporta is the president. And I think that the players, Messi amongst them, uh, is happy that Laporta is there. And I think that Laporta has a, has a chance to convince Messi to stay, not only because Messi will turn 34 in a few months, but because I think he's comfortable in Barcelona. I mean, the lifestyle for him is good. 
Uh, then if Barcelona can offer him a project with youngsters coming up from the ranks, as we've seen in recent uh, weeks, and the team is doing well in La Liga and in the Cup, I think there's future, probably a couple of years before they win a Champions League, but it depends on Messi. And I think that now there are more chances to see Messi in Barcelona forever than there were a couple of weeks ago. Liverpool got a much-needed win in their bid for Champions League football next season. Diogo Jota scored the only goal of the game on his return to Wolves. That puts Liverpool up to sixth in the English Premier League table, still five points off the top four. There was a lengthy delay when the Wolves keeper Rui Patricio was assessed by medical staff after a collision late in the game. He was stretchered off the pitch. The former England keeper Rob Green said it was a serious incident. A bright game, a lively game, wasn't it? And uh, one where both teams really were on the front foot and took the game to each other. And and it was one that I wasn't expecting coming to the ground today and and had really enjoyed it. But it goes without saying, it it doesn't matter when you see an incident like that. You just hope that Patricio is okay and you hope that, you know, he recovers well. Champions League action returns tonight with Manchester City taking a 2-0 lead into their last 16 second leg against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Raheem Sterling is back in City's squad after being rested for the Premier League win over Fulham at the weekend. City boss Pep Guardiola says Sterling has reacted in the right way to the club's rotation policy. Always, always uh, Raheem and all the players training and react really well. I don't expect they are happy and the guys who don't play nor even the guys who are not selected. So it's normal. It uh, always happened since the football was created. Raheem in this case have been so important and is so important for the team and for all of us. Also tonight, Real Madrid take a 1-0 lead into their second leg at home against Atalanta. Uh, in the NBA, Steph Curry dropped six threes on the league-leading Utah Jazz in a 131-119 victory for the Golden State Warriors. Curry finished with 32 points. Draymond Green helped out with his 26th triple-double. Uh, Utah lost for only the 10th time through 38 games this season. And in boxing, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury's World Heavyweight title showdown has moved a step closer, with Joshua's promoter saying a deal has been signed. More on this when I return with sports in 25 minutes. Thanks, Atom. Coming up in just a moment, we'll have the uh, news summary for you. But first, the weather forecast, mainly fine with highs of around 27 degrees. Winds moderate easterlies. The outlook, rather warm and relatively humid in the next couple of days, with coastal mist in the morning and at night. Slightly cooler early next week. Right now, it's 21 degrees, relative humidity 90%. It's now half past seven with a news summary. Here's Samantha Butler. The World Health Organization has urged countries to keep using the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine as a growing list of European nations suspend injections. Spain, France, Italy and Germany are the latest to halt its use as a precaution. Concerns were initially raised by Norway about a small number of people who'd suffered blood clots. Sarah Vottel is a senior doctor at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. We absolutely understand that people um, will be concerned regarding this decision. We feel that we had to make this pause in order to understand what was going on with the cases that were reported in such a short period of time. But these are very rare cases that we haven't seen before uh, after vaccination. So we need to get an overview. AstraZeneca insists data from millions of recipients show the vaccine is safe. The UN special envoy for Syria says there's a window of opportunity to end the war in Syria 10 years after the conflict began. Geir Pedersen said there was a relative calm and front lines weren't changing. He called for international cooperation to develop this into a ceasefire. The front lines in Syria have not changed. We have what I call a relative calm, but an extremely fragile calm. We need to develop that relative calm into a nationwide ceasefire. This has not happened before, but it needs to happen this time. The Vatican has ruled that Roman Catholic priests cannot bless same-sex couples and any such blessings are invalid in the eyes of the Church. The statement was approved by Pope Francis. Here's the BBC's David Willey. 
The Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith is the Catholic Church's guarantor of correct interpretation of its teaching. Today's statement says same-sex unions cannot be the subject of an official church blessing as, I quote, God cannot bless sin. But Pope Francis is more nuanced. He has pronounced himself in favour of legal protection for gay couples and some Catholic priests regularly bless same-sex unions. Climate campaigners have criticised the man chosen to be the next head of the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development. Matthias Cormann, a former finance minister in Australia, is due to become the OECD's Secretary General in June. Critics have described his record on tackling climate change as atrocious. Here's the BBC's Andrew Walker. The OECD gives advice to its members, mainly rich country governments, and acts as a forum for negotiations. It also has a role in advising on environmental policies. A group of campaigners point to Matthias Cormann's role in Australian government, which they say persistently failed to reduce climate-changing emissions at home and acted as a blocker in international forums. They said it was highly unlikely he would play an effective role in advocating ambitious targets. In a statement of his vision for the OECD job, Mr Cormann referred to climate change several times and called for zero net emissions as soon as possible. You're listening to the news on RTHK. Thanks to Samantha Butler in our newsroom. This is Hong Kong Today with me, Janice Wong and Mike Weeks. Coming up. They are working in the U.S. consulate as office staff, but we are still liaising with the U.S. consul general to understand more about their job later. We will also arrange the household contact of these two cases admitted to the hospitals for testing and also for quarantine. The Center for Health Protection's Dr. Albert Au announces that two staff members from the U.S. consulate have tested preliminary positive for COVID-19. The cases were uncovered in the ambush-style lockdowns that have been taking place in Central and Western District since the outbreak of coronavirus at a Saiyang Pun gym. We'll have more on that. At, uh, we'll have more on that ahead. Plus, the government expands its vaccination drive to cover millions more people because of the low take-up so far. And Liverpool climbed to sixth in the English Premier League after a 1-0 win at Wolves. First, though, Hong Kong's film industry has been given a major boost with the local industry's choice for the best foreign language Oscar, making the five-strong list of nominees. A film about the 2019 protests is also up for best documentary short. Cecil Wong has the details. Directed by Derek Jung, the film Better Days is the first movie put forward by Hong Kong to be nominated for the Best Foreign Language Film Oscar since 1993, when Farewell My Concubine was on the list. The Mandarin language film was made and set in the city of Chongqing, and was a major box office hit on the mainland last year, though it was less widely seen in the SAR. The film will be up against nominees from Romania, Bosnia, Tunisia, and a co-production from Denmark, the Netherlands, and Sweden for an award that has never been won by Hong Kong. The ceremony on April the 25th will also spotlight a documentary about the 29 anti-extradition movement, Do Not Split, made by Norwegian filmmaker Anders Hammer, which is up for Best Short Documentary. In the Best Director category, mainland-born Chloe Zhao will compete for her film Nomadland, which is also up for Best Picture. For the first time, there are two women on the shortlist for the Director Trophy, with Britain's Emerald Fennel, who's nominated for another Best Picture hopeful, Promising Young Woman. The Netflix film Mank leads the nominations with 10. Cecil Wong. The government says it's exploring ways to allow hundreds of Hong Kongers stuck for months in the UK to return home. However, there's no sign yet of a ban on arrivals from Britain and three other countries being fully lifted. Steve Dunthorne has the details. Hong Kong banned arrivals from Britain on December the 22nd as it sought ways to prevent a new, more infectious strain of COVID-19 from reaching the SAR. The ban applies to anyone who has spent at least two hours in the UK in the 21 days prior to boarding. 
Brazil, Ireland and South Africa are covered by the same rules. Reports say more than 400 Hong Kong residents in Britain and elsewhere have sought help from the Immigration Department, with some saying they had only prepared for a short trip. A spokesman said the government recognised the impact of the rules on Hong Kong residents, as well as the fact that the number of coronavirus cases in Britain has fallen dramatically, while a third of the population there is now vaccinated. It says it's looking at ways to allow Hong Kong people to return to the SAR directly from Britain and will announce the details later. However, there's no sign yet of quarantine rules being eased. People arriving from anywhere outside China will still have to spend 21 days at a designated hotel. Steve Dunthorne. The government is expanding its coronavirus inoculation program to cover more than 5 million people aged 30 and above. That's because of the relatively low vaccination rate in the past two and a half weeks since the program was launched. Domestic helpers and people over 16 studying outside of Hong Kong are among those who will also be given priority, as Wendy Wong reports. The government wants to boost the number of people getting vaccinated amid a slow take-up rate in the city. Besides the elderly and medical workers, for example, priority will be given to domestic helpers and students aged over 16 who study outside of Hong Kong. They can make a booking online from 9 a.m. today. The official heading the government's vaccination drive, Civil Service Chief Patrick Nip, pointed out that fewer than 200,000 people have taken the jab so far since it began late last month. He said while some were adopting a wait-and-see approach, amid reports of deaths and side effects, others were keen to be inoculated. We noticed that there are still a capacity to handle more. There are people who uh, do not belong to the priority groups but who wish to be uh, vaccinated early. The uh, present uh, expansion of the priority groups to include uh, those uh, aged 30 and above basically is to make more people um, who wish to be vaccinated can get the vaccines and also to streamline the administration, uh, administrative arrangements. Mr Nip said Hong Kong currently has 1 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines produced by mainland company Sinovac and 1.34 million doses from German drug maker BioNTech. Secretary for Food and Health Sophia Chan reiterated that the vaccines are safe and that no link has been established between the jabs and the reported deaths. She again stressed the need for the people of Hong Kong to get vaccinated. The more people get vaccinated, the faster they get vaccinated, the better that they are protected, not only as an individual, but also uh, in a community as well as improving or helping with the uh, control of our epidemic situation. Twelve more vaccination centres will be open, taking the total to 27. People can also book and take the jabs at more than 2,000 private clinics. Wendy Wong. Infectious diseases expert Dr. Wilson Lam says the expansion of the government's program may not result in an immediate jump in the number of people seeking a vaccination. He told RTHK many people are still concerned about the safety of the jabs following the deaths of seven people who'd recently been inoculated, as well as others who'd suffered serious side effects. I would not expect a big jump in coming days because the general confidence of, about vaccinations is being hampered by the recent incidents. But hopefully the younger citizens would just join to be vaccinated because that's very important to achieve the herd immunity as soon as possible. Dr. Lam said the government should step up its efforts to allay fears about the coronavirus vaccines. Well, a panel of vaccine experts say heart problems are the likely cause of death for most of the seven people who've passed away after receiving inoculations. But they see no need to change vaccination guidance for people with cardi- cardiovascular conditions. The experts say there's no sign of a direct link between the vaccination, the Sinovac vaccination, and any of the deaths. Professor Ivan Hung says people with heart problems should get vaccinated if their condition is stable. We only refer to patients who have symptoms or have very poor control. For example, their their hypertension, they have very poorly controlled or they have very poorly controlled diabetes or they have ongoing symptoms, for example, chest pain or shortness of breath on exertion. So these patients, we would suggest them to defer the vaccination until they have control their current illnesses. And then, of course, they could receive the vaccine afterwards. Professor Hung said heart problems are common in Hong Kong, causing an average of almost 17 deaths a day. 
Ambridge-style lockdowns have been carried out for a third consecutive night in parts of central and western district, with people who live in seven blocks and two areas of Saying Pun sealed off for COVID-19 tests. It's part of a drive by the authorities to try to halt the spread of one of the biggest clusters of infections yet seen in Hong Kong. It started at a gym in the area and has now grown to at least 122 cases. Two infected U.S. consulate workers have been identified through the lockdowns, while mandatory testing orders have been issued to dozens of other buildings in and around Saying Pun. For more on the situation in the area, we're now joined by the chair of the Central and Western District Council, Chiang Lai King. Good morning, Ms. Chang. Morning. Thanks Hi. For, good morning. Hi. Thanks for joining us Hi. on the program. Hi. Uh, do you Hi. know? Do you know what the situation is like at Saying Pun now? Uh, now that the uh, latest lockdown has uh, ended. Now I received the news. The after the the compulsory testing, maybe they cannot looking for some case. But you know, uh, this is the five times uh, because. The first lockdown is last Saturday. Uh, the lockdown is at our di- our community. is at the middle folks and the Robinson Place uh, Tower One and Tower Two. The first the first lockdown at the last Saturday. Some residents ask me why why the government give the lockdown notice for them because maybe their building is locked. The uh, confirmed case because um, we have low the Robinson Bay the Robinson Place have two towers the only one case at the tower two and also the tower one the tower one residents also need to go to the to the compulsory compulsory testing because the lockdown is a announcement they must obey the the, the announcement go to uh, downstairs to have the, the the checking. All right, Ms. Cheng, um, 240 people were tested in the uh, latest lockdown uh, last night at Sai Ying Pern and uh, no mm. confirmed COVID cases were found. Uh, are you happy in general with the way the government has been handling the outbreak linked to uh, Earth's uh, fitness center? Oh, because after the fitness center, the cases, everybody in the central and western district I think they are very, very concerned this case. So, when the residents have received the letter from the Home Affairs Department, because their building maybe have uh, one case or something, since the same pool building uh, last night, they tended to go to the community centre to have testing. So, we, we can observe that maybe one person they have two testing at one day. One time, they go to the community test center uh, to 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 um is uh, per the government's instruction. And the other way, when the building uh, was locked down uh, since last night, they need to go to check again. So I received the news. Maybe they have two times for the checking for only within one day. Right. So, so, so many residents. I mean, are they are they satisfied with this arrangement, or or, or are they not happy with it? They, because they won't have kept their normal life, and maybe they stay at home. They maybe they work stay. From home, from home, or or maybe they have their studying or something. So when they receive the lockdown, seems as receive the lockdown also from the government press release. So sometimes maybe suddenly they give their they they disturb to their normal life. So they some is feel unhappy, some is feel unfair. <laughs> why why choose me to have two times? Uh, two times within a day. And what about businesses in the area? How are they coping with the outbreak? Operate. Businesses, I mean, how, how are they coping with the outbreak? Are they carrying out, uh, for example, more disinfection? How to say? Uh, 
say it. Because we know this is maybe whole from the HAD. Sometimes we, we go, we, we give the idea for the residents to go to the community centre. But sometimes we know the centre cannot open on time. Maybe we, 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 we give the news, it's talk about the time in the morning at 10 o'clock. Maybe the centre was opened at 11 o'clock or something in the morning. So some residents have so many campaigns and they feel they cannot, according the government's, the government's instruction to do something. All right, we have so to leave they it. feel unsatisfaction and unhappy. All right, we have to leave it there, but thanks for joining us this morning. That's uh, Chang Lai King, the chair of the Central and Western District Council. It's now 13 minutes to 8. Despite assurances from the World Health Organization that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is safe, Spain and Italy have become the latest European countries to follow Germany, Denmark and the Netherlands in halting programs using the jab pending a review by the EU regulator. Italy's decision comes as much of the country has been put back into lockdown following a surge in the number of cases of COVID-19 there. The BBC's Mark Lowen is in Milan, which, ha- which was at the heart of the first wave of infections last year. Just over a year on, well, here we are again with uh, a third wave and yet another lockdown of many, many businesses and shops and schools right across the country. And there is a sense of real despair here, that kind of sense of collective sacrifice and national solidarity, people singing from the balconies that you'll remember back uh, a year ago. Well, that has all given way to a sense of a very, very bleak despair here as, as yet again uh, over half the country goes into a red zone. And for three days over the Easter break, the whole of the country will be in the red zone so shops restaurants schools will all have to close it's got a slow and sluggish vaccine rollout they're trying to increase the the rollout of the vaccines 170,000 a day going up to 300,000 a day from today and 500,000 a day by middle of April but it is still a real case of trying to catch up with the virus and to try to get to the point where the vaccines outweigh the daily infections. Worries are also growing in Germany over rising COVID infections. Some doctors there are calling for another lockdown. The Prime Minister of the Bavarian region called on politicians to get themselves vaccinated with AstraZeneca just hours before Berlin blocked its use. The BBC's Jenny Hill is in the German capital. After a winter in lockdown, Germany has only just lifted some restrictions. Schools, nurseries, hairdressers and some shops have reopened in recent weeks. But it seems increasingly likely that they're going to have to close again. New variants are spreading, case numbers are rising, and many experts are warning that this country, like so many of its neighbours, is now in the grip of a third wave. The Robert Koch Institute, which advises the government on its pandemic response, is raising the alarm, saying they expect case numbers to dramatically increase by Easter. But perhaps the strongest warning of the day has come from Germany's intensive care doctors, who've demanded an immediate reintroduction of lockdown measures, and they've urged the government to speed up its vaccination programme. Nearly three months in, just 7% of the population have had a first jab. Along with the European Medicines Agency, the World Health Organization is to meet today to discuss the evidence around possible side effects of AstraZeneca. But for now, the WHO and the EMA continue to say the benefits outweigh the risks. The BBC's Naomi Grimley reports. Well, what has happened is over the last few days, some cases, a very small number, around 40, have come to light across Europe. So there was a case of a woman who had multiple blood clots in Austria, also some cases in Norway and Denmark. But these are a very small number. And so Oxford AstraZeneca have been pointing out that, in fact, the number of people who've had this vaccine across the UK and the EU totals 17 million. So 40 cases isn't actually, uh, you know, something to be worried about. If anything, it's lower than what would be the case of blood clots in the general population normally. 
there were concerns earlier in the year that the vaccine wasn't effective enough in the over 65s. It's almost like this is a sort of extension of it. Also, a lot of politics has been swirling round. Remember, member states of the EU were worried that they weren't getting enough of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, there was also that row when President Macron spoke out about its effectiveness and then later had to retract that. And of course, also mixed into this whole swirling mix of stories is Brexit. And of course, this is a British vaccine. They are saying, look at the data. There's nothing statistically to worry about here. And it's not just AstraZeneca that's saying that. It's also Oxford University. And Professor Andrew Pollard is one of the lead researchers on the vaccine there. Here in the UK, we see about 3,000 cases of blood clots happening every month. When you then put a vaccination campaign on top of that, and you've got to then try and separate out whether when they occur, they are at all related to the vaccine or not. And this is something that the authorities here have been doing more than 11 million doses given. They're not seeing um, any increase in the number of cases of blood clots. And that was Professor Andrew Pollard from Oxford University ending that report. The new director of broadcasting has told legislators that a programme was abruptly pulled from RTHK last week because it wasn't completely impartial. But Patrick Lee refused to go into specifics about his decision to replace an episode of LegCo Review that was to have discussed Beijing's electoral changes in Hong Kong with a rerun. Liberal Party lawmaker Felix Chung was among lawmakers who'd wanted an explanation for that and other shows being pulled. He spoke to RTHK's Richard Pine. We understand there's a charter that all the people of the RTHK has to follow. Uh, what is the line that they have to follow? Whatever they have done right and wrong. Uh, for example, there are a couple of programs that has been taken out and are not allowed to broadcast. Uh, what wrong was that? I mean, at least demonstrations should tell the people why or, or did they make any mistakes on the program and they have to tell them how to um, ratify that or how to improve that. For example, as a guest speaker, I always joined uh, various RTHK programs. I mean, if I say something wrong or something not appropriate and, and eventually the program was not allowed to broadcast at least you have to tell me what wrong did i do so um i, I think the director or the administration should clearly give a directions to all the producer or even the guests of rthk Liberal Party leader Felix Chung speaking there to Richard Pine. And now with a final look at the business news this morning, here's Carolyn Wright. Asian stocks look set for gains as trading begins for the day. The ASX is up almost a fifth of a percent in early trading. Hang Seng Index futures up just over half a percent and Nikkei futures up two fifths of a percent. High demand made in the pandemic for items such as hand sanitizer and loungewear mean they are now being used to calculate the cost of living in the UK. Hand weights used by gym goers who are stuck at home have also been added to the basket of goods used to measure the movement of prices. The annual review by the Office for National Statistics also added smartwatches and electric cars, but white chocolate and sandwiches bought at work are out. The ONS said it decided to add men's loungewear bottoms and women's sweatshirts to the basket of more than 700 goods, which is used to calculate inflation to reflect a move towards more casual clothing. And in currencies, the yuan is trading at 6.50 to the US dollar. We've got 10 Hong Kong dollars, 79 cents to the pound, 109.2 yen to the US dollar, and 1 US dollar, 19 cents to the euro. Electors who have moved should update their registration particulars with the Registration and Electoral Office by the 2nd of April. You may submit your application by post, email, or fax, or online. Remember to submit address proof for change of residential address. The deadline is the same for change of functional constituency. Check your particulars on voterinfo.gov.hk. For inquiries, call 2891-1001. Time for our last look at sports. I'm Adam Jung. 
Liverpool got a much-needed win in their bid for a place in the English Premier League's top four and guaranteed Champions League football next season. Just the one goal settled the game at Wolves. Sadio Mane plays it square to Salah, back to Mane, now to Jota, Jota with a chance, it's in! Rui Patricio couldn't keep it out and Diogo Jota has come back to Molyneux on his first visit back against his former club and he has scored the opening goal. It finished 1-0 for Liverpool who climbed to sixth in the table, still five points off the top four. There was a lengthy delay when the Wolves keeper Rui Patricio was assessed by medical staff after a collision late in the game. He was stretchered off the pitch. The former England keeper Rob Green said it was a serious incident. A bright game, a lively game, wasn't it? And uh, one where both teams really were on the front foot and took the game to each other. And, and it was one that I wasn't expecting coming to the ground today and, and had really enjoyed it. But it goes without saying, it, it, it doesn't matter when you see an incident like that. You just hope that Patricio is OK and you hope that you know he recovers well. In Spain, Lino Messi has equaled the all-time appearance record for Barcelona. He scored twice in a 4-1 win over bottom club Huesca. Messi tied Xavi's club record of 767 appearances. The win put Barca second in La Liga, four points behind the leaders Atletico Madrid. To boxing, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury's world heavyweight title showdown has moved a step closer, with Joshua's promoter Eddie Hearn saying a two-fight deal has been signed. The winner of the all-British fight will become the undisputed heavyweight champion. Location and dates have not been confirmed. Joshua holds the WBA, WBO and IBF belts. Fury has the WBC title. Here's the BBC's Mike Costello. Joshua's promoter Eddie Hearn, who's been promoting a show in the United States in Dallas at the weekend, has been telling ESPN over in the States that there's been a major effort on behalf of all parties, as you say, to get the deal over the line, but no date has been set. And regarding the venue, there have been offers, according to Hearn, from the Middle East, from Asia, Eastern Europe and the United States. All of that we already knew. Also, no heavyweights in the era of four world governing bodies, which is the mess that's been created for the last 30 years in boxing. But every now and again, it leads to an exciting conclusion such as this one. No heavyweight has ever held all four recognised versions of the world heavyweight title. So still hurdles to be overcome, but all of the indications are positive. The search for a new quarterback has begun for the NFL's New Orleans Saints after Drew Brees announced his retirement on Monday following 15 years with the club and a Super Bowl title. Reports out of New Orleans are saying the team are looking within the club to find a replacement, and that could be Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill. And we finish with sailing. Team New Zealand are just two more race wins away from retaining the America's Cup. Yesterday, off the coast of Auckland, they won the eighth race over the Italian challengers Luna Rossa. New Zealand went from four minutes behind to more than four minutes in front, which is unprecedented in the event's 170-year history. The holders lead the series 5-3. Title goes to the first team to reach seven wins. And as you look at sports... Thanks, Adam. Before we go today, the weather forecast. Mainly fine, the top temperature will be around 27 degrees. Winds moderate easterlies. Forecasters say it will be rather warm and relatively humid in the next couple of days. There will also be coastal mist in the morning and at night. Slightly cooler early next week. Right now, it's 21 degrees, relative humidity 88%.